All right, welcome back to WMAC Now with your host, Chuck Stevenson, coming at you with the recap for Ultimate Fighter Season 30, Episode 5. This week is going to feature the heavyweights, Bobby Maximus taking on Eduardo Perez. And uh, this actually ended up being a better fighter fight than the two previous heavyweight fights combined. So let's go ahead and get into it. So it opens up. And it shows um, Laura Gallardo and Catherine Paparaki, the two flyweight fighters from last week. They're talking in the house uh, over some, looks like some cereal. Everything seems all cool between them. It shows uh, Paparaki in her room. And uh, she's kind of disappointed with the coaching staff for her fight. Uh, she thinks that, you know, the Team Nunes staff didn't have a good game plan for her. Like, it seems like, she basically thinks that the coaches didn't make a game plan that played to her strengths. Instead, he was all worried about uh, what Gallardo was going to do and, and basing the entire game plan off of what Gallardo was going to do rather than playing off of Pop Rocky's strengths, uh, which is pretty interesting. Then, it, uh, you know, it shows like the two heavyweight sides in the house and there's a lot of talk about, you know, Bobby Maximus's age because he's 43 you know, he's Bobby's talking to uh, Mo Usman about, you know, how he knows he's a big underdog. And it shows uh, Perez sitting at the table with some of the guys. And they're talking about, you know, the last time Bobby fought was in 2009 and he got choked out. And uh, Perez was like 14 at the time. So there's a big age difference between these two. So then they cut to the, uh, the weekly fighter focus and it goes to... Uh, First one is Eduardo Perez. So Perez uh, lives in Richmond, California with his mom and dad and a brother. Still lives at home. He trains at American Kickboxing Academy, a.k.a. I mean, should be no stranger to any fight fan. I mean, Luke Rockhold, Daniel Cormier, uh, Josh Thompson. That's where Habib and all the... Dagestan, Dagestani bros train when they're in uh, in the U.S. A lot of good fighters have come out of American Kickboxing Academy. So Perez actually started off with kickboxing and then made the switch to MMA. Um, started fighting as an amateur in 2017. He currently has a four and one record, and because his family his family immigrated from Mexico, he really looks up to and admires a lot of Mexican fighters. Like you mentioned, Cain Velasquez, uh, what, Julio Cesar Chavez Sr., probably the greatest Mexican boxer of all time. Uh, so, he, you know, he pays a lot of respect to his heritage and admires Mexican fighters. Uh, so then it goes to the other side. It goes to a Team Nunes training session. Or no, I'm sorry, that's still on the same team as Perez. And, uh, you know, Amanda is trying to motivate her team because they've suffered two straight losses. And she says, you know, I'm just trying to get some motivation, trying to get their spirits up. Um, and then Chandler Cole is wrestling with the guy who lost in the first episode. And unfortunately, he suffers an injury, an elbow injury. And they're nursing that for a bit. But then it cuts... Uh, it goes back to the house and it's time for the focus on Bobby Maximus. And I knew he was on the Ultimate Fighter season two, but I'm like really struggling to remember who he was. And then he mentions, you know, oh, it's Rob McDonald. And then it flooded back to me who he was like, oh, yeah, I, I, I do remember, you know, his first run in the UFC. Anyway, Bobby's 43 years old. He was on Team Hughes on the Ultimate Fighter 2, which fe featured the heavyweights and the welterweights. Um, he lost his first fight in the house on the Ultimate Fighter. If I remember correctly, it was to Kerry Shaw. And, but then he got signed anyway to the UFC based on that performance because uh, he was winning that fight until I think his shoulder blew out or dislocated, something like that. Um, he... And then, you know, he, he got cut from the UFC and was still fighting. And then his son was born in 2009. And uh, he decided to walk away from fighting to focus on, you know, being a father. 
and he now has three kids. He owns and operates his own gym, Maximus Gym. It's like a fitness center. And then when he found out that season 30 of The Ultimate Fighter was going to train the heavyweights, he said something just like clicked for him. And I think he got that hunger back. Like he got, he found that drive, got that hunger. He just says it just made sense and everything clicked for him. And I mean, I can't speak to him about it as a fighter, but I do understand like, you know, you walk away from something and then something comes up and it, it just clicks and you get that drive back. I, so I definitely understand that feeling. Uh, mine's a little different. It's in a different area, but I, I certainly understand what he's talking about. Like you walk away from something and you think you're done and then something comes up and then boom, it just, you get that drive, which I think is really cool. Anyway, it then, then the show cuts to uh, the UFC doctor office. And Chandler Cole, who hurt his elbow earlier, he has a torn, uh, I think the abbreviation is UCL. It's in his elbow. Uh, he's going to have, apparently he's going to have limited movement. It's not a full tear. And he's going to have limited movement. <coughs> Excuse me. It's certainly not good. But it's, it's workable is basically what it comes down to. So he's just going to take it easy in training and try to work through it. Probably going to end up suffering for it later, though. It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, then it cuts to uh, Perez uh, fight prep. And I'll tell you what, this the kid looks strong. He looks impressive. He, he looks like he strikes very hard. And um, Team Nunez is advising him to work behind the jab. They're saying, you know, keep that jab working and work behind the jab. And, I mean, he has the height and reach advantage going into this fight, so it makes sense. Uh, then it goes back to the house, and it shows Bobby is sitting on the couches with uh, Brogan, San Brogan Walker and Claire Guthrie, and he's working some sports psychology with them. You know, he he's talking about writing stuff down and just working out thoughts. Uh, and it seems like, you know, he, his, his age and experience provide like a wisdom to the younger fighters, but Brogan and Claire are on team Nunez and he's on team Pena and team Pena teammate, Juliana Miller basically admits that she feels betrayed and she actually confronts him about it in the van, either on the way to the house or on the way to the gym. Doesn't really say. But it's funny because like she's busy confronting him and everybody else is trying to stay out of it. And you could tell some of them are just really fighting very hard to not roll their eyes at her. Like it is just a really cringe moment. And you could tell like everyone's just like, oh my God, please stop talking. You're embarrassing yourself. That's what it really comes across as it looks like. Because, like, Usman is sitting on the same row in the van as Miller. And he all he is doing is trying to look forward. But he even looks up at the camera like, what? Like, oh, my God. And then uh, I think, uh, what's, his, what's his name? Paunga? Poga? Actually does roll his eyes towards Bobby at, at one point. Um, and then... It, it goes to the confessional with Bobby and he just thinks that Juliana is being immature because Miller thinks that he's like that Miller thinks that he is like sharing team secrets or something. And all he's doing is, you know, talking like mentality stuff. But, uh, anyway, it, it, it goes to, uh, cuts to Juliana Pena and, uh, she's talking about, you know, she's really excited and, you know, the show, show like you can tell she's really passionate about coaching this team. She talks about losing the sleep over the fights and her fighters and talks about being really excited to finally face off again with Amanda Nunes and everything. So then keeping with Team Pena, it goes to Bobby Maximus fight prep time. And uh, for Maximus, they're focusing on getting the fight to the ground. Like they know Bobby is a better ground fighter than uh, Perez. 
and uh, Pena just gushes over Bob. He talks about how he's like a grinder, saying, you know, if I asked him to walk nine to run nine miles, he'd run ten. If I asked him for a hundred push-ups, he'd do hundred and fifty. So stuff like that. And then uh, it talks to and Bobby is in the confessional booth, and he's talking about worrying about. Uh, He's legitimately worried about ring rust. It's been 13 years since he last had a fight. So he is legitimately worried about ring rust, which is fair. Then it goes back to the house. And Bobby actually, you know, reaches out to Juliana Miller and is trying to hash it out with her saying, hey, I'm not sharing team secrets or whatever. You know, you have nothing to worry about. And she's kind of not having it. Like, she's just not. And... <laughs> Earlier, she talks about how she learned to, you know, tell tell your truth, which I'll admit had me rolling my eyes. Because anytime someone talks about, you know, sharing my truth or telling my truth, all it means is sharing your feelings. That's that's really all it is. It, I just hate that phrase, telling my truth. No, you're just telling your feelings. Anyway, back to the show. Uh, so then it goes... Oh, then it goes to weigh-ins. Eduardo Perez weighs in at 266, the absolute limit for heavyweight. And Bobby Maximus weighs in at 237. Man, there is a big size difference. <laughs> Just huge difference between these two. Perez has the reach. He has the height. He has the weight. Big difference. And it plays out in this fight, too. Okay. Fight time. Round one. So Maximus gets an early takedown. And we're talking within the first 10 seconds. Gets an early takedown. But Perez is able to get back up. Bobby gets him down again. And uh, gets to mount even. Like almost gets straight to mount. But Bobby doesn't secure the mount. Gets out of it. And Perez is able to get up in a scramble. And Bobby is controlling the clinch. And then at one point, Perez just lands an absolutely hard elbow in the clinch to Bobby's head. And uh, that allows him to get that separation. Or no, I'm sorry. That's before the separation. More control by Bobby, but that elbow, I think, was key. And then per Perez gets a huge knee. I mean, just a big knee. You could just hear it smacking off the stomach of Bobby Maximus. And that's what allows Perez to get the separation. And then he stuffs a Bobby takedown. And at that point, Bobby starts looking tired. Um, shoots again, and Perez stuffs it. Gets inside of Bobby's half guard. Starts throwing some ground and pound. And his ground and pound is super heavy. And the referee. Uh, it, it's obvious that Bobby's done. And the referee stops it. Giving Perez the win via TKO. 3 minutes 58 seconds of the first round. So my thoughts on this were. Uh, particularly on Perez. Perez really strikes hard. I mean his. Every shot he was landing, just thudding, like just, just like really thudding sound and just heavy hands, heavy elbows, heavy knees. Every strike he lands, just heavy. But speaking of heavy, Perez is absolutely top heavy. That dude has some of the skinniest legs I've ever seen on a heavyweight. I mean, they're not quite John Jones. Skinny chicken legs, but man, they are super skinny for a guy who is so big up top. And I think that's what makes him easy to take down. The fact that you get to those legs and get him off balance, he's going to go down easy. And that has me worried for later, for in the later rounds. Especially because there's going to be more wrestlers here at heavyweight. So I think everyone's going to have a hard time dealing with Perez's strikes, but if they can get him, but a good wrestler that can get him down and keep him down, which, let's be honest, Maximus messed up. He had the mount and then screwed it up. 
But uh, Perez, if he can stay on the feet, man, ooh, he's scary on the feet. But uh, as for Bobby, you know, he didn't win. But if you can't feel a little bit inspired, like especially like I'm in my upper 30s, I'm 37. If you can't feel inspired by a guy like Bobby Maximus taking all the time off and then coming back, and putting in an honest effort and trying hard and, you know, doing good at first. I don't know. I just feel like he's he's a little bit inspiring. I'm inspired by him. I think it's a really great story. And I wish the best of luck to him. Anyway, that is the first heavyweight win for Team Nunez. And I believe the score is now 3-2 to two overall in the quarterfinals. quarterfinals yeah i think so anyway the first elimination round it is now three to two in favor of team pena and it is time to pick the next fight and it is juliana pena's fight and it is a flyweight fight and pena picks juliana miller from her team to take on claire guthrie of team nunez and this is going to be a good one because this was a this is a rematch of a fight from invicta where Guthrie won via decision. And let me find the date on this one. So the date of that first fight was... 2021. Oh, it was only last year in, in May. So just a little over a year ago was that fight. So less than a year from... Yet less than a year before the show started recording. And that was Miller's first loss. And she has not fought since then. Whereas Guthrie, I think she has fought since then. So, no, Guthrie hasn't fought since then either. But that's, it was two, she's sitting on two wins in a row. So this is a bit of a grudge match here. So that should make it more interesting. And I think they're setting up Juliana Miller to seem like a head case, which she is young. And from what I've seen from her before, she, she does seem kind of immature. She's only, how old? Don't have an age for her on topology, but she is young and she has seemed kind of immature from what I've seen from interviews and stuff in the past. But I think they're setting her up to just be that, you know, that young, immature, crazy head case type of girl, which could be editing. Might not be. I don't know. It just seemed like they were setting her up to be like a foil in this episode. But anyway, those are my thoughts. You know, Ultimate Fighter 30, Episode 5. Eduardo Perez wins the heavyweight bout against Rob. Bobby Maximus McDonald moves. Perez moves on. Next week, we've got the flyweight Juliana Miller versus Claire Guthrie. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on the episode in the comments down below. If you like the vid, please hit that like button. Share it as well. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to WMAC Now, the best, most complete women's mixed martial arts dedicated platform on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.